All right. The internet died on me, so I had to start up a new uh, session. Hopefully this one works okay. So where were we at? I want to wait for people to get back on here live. Talking about the Seahawks' future, changes in personnel. I hadn't even gotten a chance to talk about Camp Chancellor yet. So I'm back there. there we go, David. Hopefully everybody can come back in here because uh, the internet just completely died on me, just <laughs> crapped out. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about Camp Chancer for a little bit. Aaron D. Solis, what's up, man? David Hedersheit is back. Jason, Bryson Posa, Beast Hewitt. Why didn't the other one work? I have no idea. So I started getting a little spinning thing, reconnecting, reconnecting. It never happened. So I just had to just kick it, start over. Sometimes you just got to reboot, reset. You know what I'm saying? That's an example. That's a microcosm of the Seahawks season right there. It's crashing, not working out, hit restart look at that all good uh let's talk about cam chancellor as some of you may or may not know cam chancellor is one of my favorite seahawks kind of represents the old school physicality the guy who um that's just you know good old hard-hitting football so much about the way the game has been legislated now they're trying to get rid of the kickoffs they can't hit receivers in the middle anymore you can't touch the quarterback you can't hit a receiver uh up here or down here and you can't you know touch them between this and this line it's just it, their safety and all that stuff easy for me i was watching football back in the late 70s That's I first got hooked. and i remember lynn swan for the steelers made a lot of diving long extended stretch catches and then just getting killed pummeled across the middle and there was no penalty for it there was no such thing as a you know defenseless receiver you were defenseless and at that time what you called it was a hospital pass if you have a quarterback throwing a high ball to you across the middle, you call that a hospital pass because that's the pass that's going to send you to the hospital and then that's the quarterback's fault throwing it there and that's that was what changed that was the rule that you had to not do that play is <laughs> to not throw the ball and expose your receiver. That was in the good old days. Now you can't touch it. Now you can't do that. With you, no fun. And so, anyway, Camp Chancellor, you know, so many times, so many great hits from Camp Chancellor, especially with the 49ers. Vernon Davis, that signature hit he put on them, I think Sunday Night Football, where he just creamed them like at the five yard line. Totally legit play, even within the rules at the time, but they still threw a flag on him. But uh, he just had a notoriously awesome way of uh, just destroying, particularly Vernon Davis, but other plenty of other receivers and running backs and so forth, kicking this rock across the parking lot. Um, but he's a one of a kind. I don't know if there'll ever be another strong safety like him. As big as him, was six foot three, built like a monster, fast smart could read defenses could pass cover but also awesome in the running game just destroy blockers taking out linemen just of uh, potentially the nfl depending on how things go that game against arizona he was having the game of his life not like his life but he had, he was having one of his best games ever uh since coming back you know uh, just last season, I was a Camp Chancellor. The situation there is, I know went on. I, I bring it up because I know he publicly recorded as saying that if if his body or the if they clear him to play, he's going to play. And then that's the headline. And then of course, and if they don't clear me to play, then I'm not going to play. <laughs> You know, so in the same breath, he says, whatever they say is going to be what he does. And so really out of his hands, he could say, oh, I'm 110% want to play. You know, that's where my heart is. But it's not up to him. It's going to be up to the doctors. And really, even if, uh, even if his own doctors say, Uh, then he's not going to play. So medically dependent on the diagnosis that habit, come back, will yourself back on the field and earn your time back onto the field. That's one thing. But when you're messing with the neck, you can't rehab that. That's a, you know, that's a 
musculoskeletal thing. That's the thing that's beyond, um, you know, what you can do as far as that's concerned. So I'm trying to see, are people still uh, seeing me here? Somebody confirm that you can see me because I think I'm back. This is the worst internet ever. Terrible, terrible, terrible. That's just terrible. Uh, anyway, I guess some people have taken Cam Chancellor's comments and I'm just not that optimistic. Maybe I'm just setting myself up for potential disappointment at the rest of the season. So I'm telling myself and convincing myself that this is what's going to happen. The Cam, Cam Chancellor, I think Cam Chancellor's playing days are over. Um, sad to say it. I wasn't ready for it to be over yet. But I think that's what it is. So we shall see. He's supposed to have <clears throat> some kind of a diagnostic test, uh, MRI or a CAT scan or something done on his neck sometime in late June, early July. And we will find out then officially what his diagnosis will be. Then. So for about the next month, we can only speculate and wonder what's going to happen. But if it is the end of it, I will I will miss having Cam Chancellor up there because he was one of the best. He should have had two rings stuck on it. Anyway, this internet is too problematic, and I apologize, but it seems to be a, a, a failing effort tonight with this. So I'm going to leave.